how do you deal with that practically when you, you, you have this desire to do everything for myself and disregard what's important to other people? You know, you, you just really have to understand that. And uh, I remember when I was a young football coach, just starting out with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Chuck Noll was my boss and he hired me and, and I said, Coach Noll, what, what is my job? I don't even know how to be a coach. And he said, well, if you just understand one thing, you're gonna be fine. Your job at working for me as a coach is to help your players play better. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, and it really kind of reminded me of my dad. He used to say the same thing as a teacher. He thought his job was to help his students get A's. It wasn't to be teacher of the year. It wasn't to be teacher of the year or be the toughest right. teacher that you could be. Coach Noel never wanted to be known as a genius or coach of the year, mm -hmm. but he felt if I help the players play better, we're gonna have a good team. And that really does test, why am I doing things? What, what's my motivation? Am I in it for myself to make me look good, to get something out of it, to get a better contract? Or am I there to help the people I'm working with? And that's something I never forgot over the years. And it's still the same way with my family. What, what's my job as a dad? Is it to be the toughest dad I can be, to, to make sure people think, oh, my kids are great? or is to help each and every one of them be the best they can be. Uh, and we have to test our motives sometimes, and could, it's really gotta be helping them be the best they can be. I think it all comes down to, you know, what is the motive of our, our heart? Am I a serving or a self-serving leader? Am I in this to give to others or to get from it? I remember a, a quote from the great statesman and prime minister, Winston Churchill, who said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And so we need to be constantly, I think, asking ourselves as men and as, as fathers, how can I give more to my wife? How can I give more to my kids? But it's counterintuitive. And that's the tough thing about it. No, it really is. We're so programmed. And if we don't watch ourselves, uh, we'll find that selfishness seeking in. What's going to be best for me uh, as opposed to what's going to be best for my wife, my kids, the people that I'm really serving? And that, that's what it's all about. You know, you mentioned the Super Bowl win and, and that was great for me and I love the pictures of the trophy and everything, but it's still not as meaningful to me as when I get a letter from one of my former players saying, Coach, I'm glad you talked to us about these off the field things. I'm glad you talked to us about being a husband and being a dad because now I'm not playing anymore. And yeah, I can look at my Super Bowl ring, but it doesn't help me in my marriage. Uh, but some of the things that you talked about have really helped me. Um, that's what it's all about. And, and we have to understand that, that this, is, this is hard work, uh, and it's hard work to be giving to others. Again, we're, we're going against the grain of you know, our fleshly and selfish nature. But you know, we, need to, we need to realize that when our kids want to go to a party that we don't think they should go to, or a movie, or whatever it might be, that we don't just go take the easy way out. We do it the hard way, and we say, you know what? I know everybody else is doing that, but we're not going to do it. But you, and you know you're going to get some headwinds from that. You know that you're going to get some pushback, but you're not taking the easy way out. Instead, you're saying, no matter what, I'm going to take some bullets, but I'm going to do what's best for my kids. It goes back to what Coach Knowles said. What, what is my job? My job is to make my kids the best people they can be. If I keep that in mind, I'm going to do the right things. I'm going to do the tough things uh, when it has to be done. Tony is a... Super Bowl winning coach and as a man, you really have been an inspiration and a model to so many people. Um, but we know that you and I aren't perfect um, as fathers and as men. Um, and there's only one ultimate role model who is the perfect role model. What inspires you about the life of Jesus as being our ultimate role model? I think I look at Christ and number one, he, he understood his mission. He understood what he was here for. And number two, he just poured out the whole time he was here, he poured out into other people. And uh, those are probably the two biggest things because so often we, we get confused about what our mission is and why we're here on earth and what we're supposed to do. And uh, secondly, it's easy to get caught up in doing things for ourselves and not doing them for other people. So when I look at Christ, uh, to me, th those were the two characteristics that stood out. And I, I think too, the, just being that role model is so great. I remember when I came into pro football to the, the Pittsburgh Steelers and Coach Noel was up in front of us and he gave us the playbook and he talked about what we should do. And he said, but when you don't have a chance to read this, 
Watch these veteran players. You rookies, follow them. If, if you follow the vets, we're going to be in good shape because they know and they'll lead you in the right direction. Uh, and that was so critical to me to have guys who had been down the road, who had been there going where I wanted to go, that could lead us and, and, and that we could follow. And then when I became a veteran player, I wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to help the younger guys be as good as they could be. But having that role model to show you is so important. It really is. I, I remember a story that you told me not too long ago, w which is probably one of the only times that you've really, really been angry. And it was with some of your players, uh, I believe right here in Tampa Bay, right? The only times I ever yelled at, at our team. You yelled at somebody? <laughs> Tony, don't you yell? 1997, we, we are, or 1996, we're just starting my first year with the Bucks, and we can't win a game. We, we can't win a game to save our lives. We're just losing at the last minute, having all kinds of problems. And I stayed calm through the whole, whole time, just instructing, doing things that way. Uh, but then on a Tuesday, which is a player's day off, uh, we had two guys who had appearances in town, one at a car dealership, one at an elementary school, and they missed them. And the next morning they came in and I said, you know what? we are not setting the right example. And I just got madder and madder and madder. And finally I blew up at him. I said, we'll, we won't win a game until you guys learn how to be good role models. So what you're really saying is guys, this is important to win games and to be great players, but you are role models and you got to take this job really, really seriously. And I think the same applies to us as dads. We think, oh, the role models are the guys like Tony Dungy and others that are in the spotlight. But as dads, we're really role models to our kids too, right? We absolutely are, and, and we have to be. And so it, it becomes not just what we say, but what we do. And that's what our kids are, are, are watching. They're listening, but they're really watching us. Remember the scriptural insight that the apostle Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 1. He says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. I mean... I'll tell you one thing, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna say that to anybody. I'm not gonna say that to my wife or my kids because I know how um, fallible I am as a man and as a, as a father. How does that make you feel? Well, the first time I read that, Mark, I felt the same way as you. I, I could never say, follow me, uh, because I, I know I'm not perfect and I'm not doing things exactly right. But the more I read it and the more I understood what Paul was saying, he's saying, I'm following Christ. I'm not gonna be perfect, I'm not gonna, be right on the line. I'm going to have some missteps, but I know I'm going in the right direction because I'm following Christ. So you can follow me and you can mm -hmm. be safe following me because I'm not going to lead you off course. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what we as dads want to be able to say to our kids, to our wife, to everybody in our family. Follow me. It's not going to be perfect. The journey is not going to be without our bumps in the road but I'm gonna lead you in the right direction. I think that is the key, not, not suggesting to our wife or kids or anybody that we are these great men of Christ, but rather that we are on this journey that we're working to be the best dads that we can be to, and to honor the Lord in everything that we do. It's so, so important. And two of the things that I talked earlier about being a great role model as fathers for our kids are consistency and integrity. And when I think of those two words, I really do think a lot about Tony Dungy, a, a man who I know well and who leads a consistent life, whoever he's with and wherever he goes. How do you, how do, you do that? Because that's a hard thing because it, sometimes it's easy to get home from work or, or from coaching and you have a, a wife that has had a difficult day with kids or, or kids that aren't behaving. How do you deal with that issue? You know, I, I think I got it from my dad because he was probably the most consistent person that I, I've ever seen. And he was the same all the time. And I wanted to be like him. Um, and, and as you said, our ultimate role model is Christ. And so that's what I, I do. I continue to read all the time. And you know, it's kind of a corny cliche, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, if that's the role model and that's, that's the, the standard, trying to get that way, trying to be consistent and, and have that integrity all the time uh, is important. And I, I would used to tell our players all the time, it's easy when you win to go out and do an interview and mm -hmm. to be humble and to give credit to everybody else. How are you when you don't win? When you lose a game, can you be the same way? That, that's, that's important. It is in that consistency and you mentioned integrity and, and C.S. Lewis said, you know, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one else is looking. And so we have to make sure even when no one is watching, even when, when it's just 
us and God that we honor him in everything we do because ultimately it will show out in the way we handle ourselves and behave in our lives and how can you do that though how do you really build that in you where you you're going to keep that integrity and do it as you say when no one's looking well i think it's it's what i call being open for inspection making sure that especially if you're married your wife or someone that's very close of you close to you my wife for example knows my password to all of my uh, all of my computers and my phone and everything else and she can have the liberty of looking at it looking at everything i'm doing she knows that she can call the office and ask how i'm doing there and what i'm doing and where i am um, i'm completely open for inspection uh, to my wife and she knows that she can ask any question that she wants to and also it's good to surround yourself with other men. Uh, it might be just one other guy or a few other guys that can ask the hard questions and make sure, making sure that you're staying on the narrow path. So those things are so important. And I'll tell you, men, um, this is a critical issue as we uh, serve as role models for our kids. We know we're not gonna be perfect mo role models, only Christ did that. But we have to strive to be the best we can be, to be an all prayer dad by, um, by following Christ and uh, showing our children what a life lived for Christ looks like.